All right. Um, everybody here, everybody? I mean, I... Yeah, we. I think we got. No. <laughs> oh yeah, we're recording. We're, we're rolling. <laughs> we're rolling, baby. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you, Bobby the God. <laughs> Bobby yeah. the fucking God. Look at this guy. This guy. Um, no, Al, you bring us in. You haven't brought us in in a while. Yeah. Uh, you going You guys are gonna be mad. So that's what I'm saying. I think we should. All right, that's fine. Sup, episode number eight three. How's everyone doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you didn't want me to do he it. He stinks at this. Boo, <laughs> boo, Lawrence, you stank. Uh, Some mellow energy. Yeah, yeah that's, I, that's who I am. Very mellow and shit. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what what player wears number eighty three. So go ahead, guys. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, sup, episode number 83. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney. Across from me, the Google God himself, the El Factoid, Lawrence DeLoach. What's up, yo? Pro, pro. To my right, we got the, the original Duck is Cold. The Duck is Cold, baby. The the Filipino kid. Yep. Um, representation for all Asians on this podcast. That's Luke what I'm here for. <laughs> yep. And um, we have a guest. We, we have, have a guest, guest um, that we've mentioned before on the podcast. His yep. Instagram, Dr. Souls. Hey. Yeah. Introduce yourself, sir. What's up, guys? Sadra Azizi, uh, also known as Dr. Souls11 on uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube. Yeah. that's What's up, guys? What's going on, buddy? Big fan. Thanks for having me. Finally. No, of course, Long man. Long time coming, man. Glad to, glad to have you on this podcast, Sadra. Uh, you're an actual doctor. Yes, sir. How I'm much, literal. How much milk should I be drinking? <laughs> oh man, that's, I don't know if he's uh, that kind of doctor. You're like a surgeon, aren't you? No, a gastroenterologist. So uh, yeah, I uh, yeah. Heart l- doctor. Lactose intolerance is real. So <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Is it, does it give you problems? If so, you should probably stop. No, I'm chilling. Oh, you chilling? All right, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. you're good. You're a good. little whole milk in my cereal. <laughs> I like to treat myself. You know. All right, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most people get uh, lactose intolerance as they get older, so it's oh not unexpected. I'm 26 right now. Yeah, you probably so still have some. Time I still got a little, a couple of years left yeah, of drinking that milk, and then. Woo! It's gonna be over for me. <laughs> Wait, so break it down for me for a second, because you don't actually practice in the city. You. I wish I could. I just yeah, no, I don't. So I uh, I work out of Iowa and I live in Manhattan. So yeah. my dream was so I grew up in upstate New York, uh-huh. and uh, my goal was always to move to Manhattan. Mm-hmm. But I knew just with the nature of the quote business of medicine, I wouldn't be able to work here and live here the kind of lifestyle I wanted to live here. Okay. So I was just like, all right, let me get in a position where I can like do it the way I want to do it down here. And then uh, that's it. So it's less than ideal because obviously, you know, travel is, you know, not fun. Right. uh, Constantly, uh, as I'm sure you guys know, uh, you know, doing your whole comedy thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, uh, but, you know, it works for now. So I I was just telling uh, Lawrence, I'm I'm looking into a closer position right now so I can... uh, either work in the city or something close enough where the commute isn't as bad. But So we'll how often are you here versus Iowa? It's uh, typically every couple weeks. So, oh, uh, so you trade off weeks. Yeah, it's like two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks here, two weeks there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very well, cool. good for you, buddy. At least, Thanks, you know, man. like like me, I'm trying to force my dream lifestyle. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I get it. You know? <laughs> That's all we're trying to do. Quit my job, work for myself, yeah, all that you. type of shit. Yeah, that'd so be nice. That'd be nice. That's dope, man. And we brought you on this podcast because obviously you're a big time sneaker you yeah. uh i don't want to say good i don't want to say we call it i don't want to say collector but i uh, connoisseur you're, yeah you're a connoisseur yeah. bro you, you uh, got taste you have oh, some really you, good taste I, yeah I, I remember you guys talking last week uh the debate of if i'm a collector or not so i don't know yeah. i would i would say i'm a collector because like you guys were talking about collecting packs and stuff mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like I, I would find myself in that category but i would still wear my shit so uh-huh. unless yes. you specifically define a collector as someone who just collects to collect then yeah i guess i'm technically not a collector but now yeah. I want to ask you, uh, and, and you know, I'm sure you you probably don't know the number off the top of your head, but how many sneakers do you do you own? Oof, j- we're hovering r- just over 400 now. So yeah, it's I'm running out of space. I'm running out of space. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. especially yeah. in a New York apartment. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. That was the other reason this uh, you know this whole work situation was uh, my entire master bedroom. Lawrence has seen this because yeah, I had Lawrence over. Mm-hmm. Right? I have to have all you guys over at some yeah, point. At some point. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Lawrence saw the uh, the sneaker gallery, if you will, as my master bedroom. So I just repurposed it into like a museum, if you will. The so walk in. Yeah, yeah. Oh. my man got the walk in. <laughs> yes, he does. Oh. Such a flex. <laughs> no, so yeah. now I mean you. I mean obviously you you have a lot of sneakers. Uh, what are some of the quote unquote grails that you would say, oh man, I fucking Yeah, have give it. us the ill shit. Yeah. Yep. What's the ill shit? Well, not even the ill shit, just the shit that you love. Like, you yeah. know, it doesn't have to be a seven thousand dollar sneaker. <laughs> it can be whatever. It doesn't have to, but it will be. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> the Red October is by far. That was like yep. what kind of pushed me into this world mm-hmm. as far as like sneaker collecting. Prior to that, I had only one pair of sneakers. It was Adidas Superstar, regular sixty old dollar pair. That was like quote my grail growing up. 
Uh, and then I got that pair when I finally had a little bit of money in college, and that shit lasted me. I still have the pair, and it's lasted me from college all the way through to almost the end of my medical training. Wow. And then from there, I just kind of jumped into the Red Octobers, and I just It's remember, a big jump. Yeah, it was yeah, a huge jump. huge jump. It was a huge jump. But yeah. like, I remember sitting in Fight Club, because I didn't know any better with the whole Fight Club tax at the time, but uh, I remember sitting there just holding the shoe for like 20 minutes, being like, am I about to fucking drop this much money on the fucking pair of sneakers. How much was it, can you say? At the time, it was 6300 after tax and everything. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Holy fucking Christ. Yeah, it was bad. Size 11. Ooh. Not even the Asian Not size. Not even Asian <laughs> size. Not even Asian size, yeah. Damn, no. dude. It's actually, that's yeah. a normal person size. No disrespect to the Asian community. You're my bad child. <laughs> right? I was about I to say, you know. I'm not Yo. even Asian, dog. That's my size. Come yeah, on, I will now. cancel you immediately. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, you know, so, okay, so the Red Octobers, you know, and, and I don't know if you you, were, you weren't into sneakers when they originally dropped on, on Nike.com. Or I wasn't you? into sneaker sneakers. Like, I was always into sneakers, but I didn't realize there was, like, a whole sneaker culture. So, like, I missed the whole Dunk era. I missed the whole uh, Roshi era. Like, I, I remember on my Facebook timeline mm-hmm. when the Red Octobers dropped, GQ, mm-hmm. I, I was following GQ at the time, but no, none of these sneaker blogs, I didn't know about Nike Talk, mm-hmm. none of that stuff. And just this image popped up, boom, Red Octobers. And I didn't know it was made by Kanye. I didn't know Kanye made sneakers at the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything. I just gotcha. saw this beautiful image. Mm-hmm. Granted, it was probably Photoshopped as fuck, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm just like, yo, I need this. Right. And, uh, and then, of course, I look for it. It sold out. And I look on eBay. Oh, Jesus, thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. But looking back, I wish I'd pulled the trigger then as opposed to when I did because I probably right, saved yeah. a couple grand. But yeah. Exactly. What are you going to do? We talk, well, we talk about this a lot. And in, in something you just said, you wish you pulled the trigger then. Because uh, yeah. sneakers uh, in general are it's it's very stock markety. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, yeah. We've had plenty of discussions about certain sneakers that when you, where you look at them now versus uh, where you may purchase them in terms of the price, it is uh, it's astronomical. We you and I we talk about it all the time. Like uh, a pair of sneakers like Mars Yards or something like that. They're going for like you know four grand on on gold or six seven grand right. on flight club yeah and there was a point when you know if you bought them you can get them for like seven eight hundred yep mm-hmm. so it's like when is the i mean obviously it depends on a person's financial situation but when is the right time to purchase a pair of sneakers if you don't get them at retail right? yeah that's a very hard question to answer and it's almost always like as soon as you can or yeah. you have to wait like years until <laughs> yeah, like people yeah, yeah. forget i or, think i'll sit on the sakai's for another five six years before i can <laughs> afford a pair you know, yeah, it's funny you brought up the Mars Yard because that exact same thing happened to me. Like I remember it came out, I looked into the story. I was like, "Yo, this is ill. Why is no one talking about this shit?" Yeah. And then, uh, so I looked for a pair. I found a pair for a thousand. I'm like, "All right, yo, this is the this is the price." Very next day, it dropped to seven hundred. Mm-hmm. I was mad as fuck. And yeah, then dude. It's... I just forgot about a couple. I don't know months or maybe a year later. I checked. What these are going for three, four grand? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. So I, I kind of got, got quote lucky, but uh, yeah. I think the method I've come up with is. I don't want to give away any in- industry secrets, but you know I'm not even on the inside or anything. What I've noticed is like when a shoe drops, you wait for, uh, like if it's a Nike drop or whatever, you wait for the kids to all get their pair or the of bot course. people to get all their pairs. Mm-hmm. And then once they start putting them onto StockX, the price will drop a little bit. Right, uh, maybe it's, it's got flooded. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then you buy it right there because from there, usually if it's it just if it's up, the kind up, of pair, up. yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's gonna just keep going up. So you try yeah. to buy it as soon as possible. You know. So uh, besides the Red Octobers, just so we can get a better idea of what you have as a collection, because um, it is impressive, uh, give me like your top five, like your your favorites. Your yeah. five. Yes. Yeah, your right. five that you own, or in general, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but. Red Octobers, definitely up there. Uh, I got to put the uh, Watch the Throne LeBron 9s. Okay. Uh, not even because they're like a favorite of mine, just like, I've only worn them maybe like twice, but uh, but just in terms of like things I could never replace or would be extremely hard to replace. I got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that. Um, uh, I got to put the a triple black uh, Yeezy 700s because that was the so only two times has an image of a sneaker like caught me off guard. It was the Red Octobers and then the triple black Yeezys. Both times I had no idea it was a Kanye shoe. Both times I was it was just the Yeezy triple black 700 was uh, just before I really started digging into sneakers. Mm-hmm. So that, those two sneakers where I was like, oh my god, it's just a beautiful looking thing. So I gotta go with that. Even though I don't know why a lot of people hate like, oh, you can't rock these. But I don't know. I'm more of a high top guy myself. So yeah, I'm a high top mm-hmm. guy. Yeah. Uh, so that's what is that three? Um, mm-hmm. Let's go with the. I gotta go with the bread ones, just because I don't know. There's something about them. Like I always find myself coming back to them, and like it's it's mm-hmm. become like my winter shoe almost because it's like yep. So yeah. mm-hmm. it just works for everything. Um, what was that four? Uh, let's see. Oh, off white. We gotta throw in the. Uh, 
Oh, man, I'm, I, I keep going back and forth between the uh, Chicago ones and the uh, press, the original Prestos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we've kind A&B. of had a debate where it's like, because yeah. everyone likes the Prestos. I mean, obviously the Chicago's are like the one, yeah. but yeah. everyone likes wearing the Prestos yeah. the most. Prestos, yeah. As far as like comfort to hype ratio, it's like it's very unmatched. I'd right. say the Yeezy Twos <laughs> and the and the comfort to hype ratio. <laughs> <on> the <Prestos. laughs> I like yeah. comfort to hype ratio. Yeah. Yeah. What were you gonna say? Lord? No, I was gonna say, and it's funny. I had a conversation with another comic, uh, Francis Ellis, who actually we had the same exact conversation because he's another guy that has both the Chicago uh, off whites and, and the, the Prestos. Off, and the Prestos. Yeah, and we were saying the same thing. It's like, bro, like. I could I I wear my off white Prestos, and like just I'll just wear it like I don't give a fuck. But then like if I like the put on the Chicago's like it's like you feel like it's a circus, bro. This <laughs> yeah, it's a there's certain sneakers that I'm just like I don't want to. You got your zip ties and your shoelaces, and you got to make sure the flaps are all good. It's and- not even <laughs> about a zip tie. It's not even. There's just certain sneakers that when you put on. There's just such a like it becomes a a circuit like you said hype yeah yeah it's a little too it's a little too much yeah yeah and it is I could wear you could wear Prestos and you could wear off white they're OG Prestos and people just be like oh okay you got OG Prestos you know yeah. what I mean yeah but if you're wearing off white Chicago's it's like oh shit bro yeah. I've only I've never seen a pair I've never seen these on feet on yeah, feet yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah so you know there are certain sneakers I mean you you uh you just recently purchased the uh the MCA oh yeah that's, oh, really? dude, that's a gorgeous gorgeous sneaker oh. it's very very underrated gorgeousness um yeah I mean comfort wise it's, it's it's there it's a you know it's Air Force One but uh yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd put it in my top six. Mm. Uh, might be too too early for that. But mm. uh, but dude, it's a gorgeous shoe. That's that's uh, that's one of those shoes where a lot of people, especially uh, especially people in my uh, comment section, and whatnot, they're like, "Oh, dude, how many patients? How many people at work notice your sneakers?" It's like, yeah. dude, no one gives a shit. No, about no, no. So, well, like, in yeah. Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. That was the next question I was going to ask you, bro. Because I we all I see you on your your Instagram feed. You're you're wearing these. These uh, limited, super exclusive sneakers, and you're like doing, you're like, you're being a surgeon. And, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> right. Um, what was the, uh, is there a reason, is there a reason behind, or it's just like one of those, fuck it, I, I love sneakers, this is when I get to wear them, and what, you know, what started that? Yeah. I mean, it, I, I, I was blessed enough to be in a world where a I get to wear pajamas to work, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. scrubs, and then b Extra like facts. exactly, yeah. and uh, and I get to wear uh, sneakers to work. Like that's mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I can't imagine a world where like I would have to wear like a suit every day with like loafers or whatever, and then mm-hmm. uh, and then I'd only wear, wear sneakers in my off time because a lot of times I'll, I'll come home after work and just not do shit. Uh, at least this was before I moved down here, yeah, um, but uh, and before the whole comedy thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, it just, it was just like a fun thing to do. And I've just, it's just like a little thing to set you apart from everybody else. Cause that's the only thing that will set you apart in the workplace is the sneakers right. or, or the, or the footwear. So, uh, it, I definitely became known in, in both my training hospital and then in the hospital I work at for being the sneaker guy. Of uh, but those MCAs by far probably got, I got the most compliments of, of any sneaker. Which color was it? The MCA. It's, it's the, the, MCA, the, the blue one. The blue. Oh, the blue one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because they had the black ones too, right? Is those that... are the moments. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mixing up museums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, uh, so yeah, that one. And then I'm trying to think, I don't think, yeah, almost every other sneaker, no matter how hyped, uh, slash flashy the color usually doesn't get any kind of attention. Maybe the occasional person be like, "Oh, that's a cool color," but right? Like, that's, that's about it. Yeah, but yeah, those MCAs really, really popped. Yeah. I think a lot of times, like it's sometimes you know, people won't know the value of the sneaker, but if it's like a, a flashy color or it's like really, yeah, usually people can tell there's something about the shoe. Yeah, there's something like extravagant about like there's certain details that'll they're like something's got to be eye. up with these ones. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think. What if is there any any sneaker that you've ever worn that people just kind of like? Oh shit! Like, and it may not be the most valuable sneaker in your collection, but it's, it's yeah. I got one that everyone usually comments on. I have a pair of Kamikaze twos that are, uh, I think they're called the Supersonics. I don't remember the nickname. Yeah, the Supersonics are nice. Yeah, but it has I, like that wet material them. on it. Yeah, okay. it, like I don't they know, look like raindrops. Yeah, yeah, it looks like raindrops are on it. Some people, everyone's like, "What the fuck are those?" Yeah, like, talk yeah. about the uh, Sean Kemp's. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have those. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So everyone yeah. usually comments on those. Uh, yeah. Or you know, anytime I wear like a pump bring back, everyone's like, "Yo, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I remember oh. those oh, shit." <laughs> oh man. But uh, yeah, usually like um, if it's not like a nostalgia thing, everyone looks at those and goes like, "What's up with those?" What are those? Yeah. yeah. Those, why are your shoes wet? You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But yeah. For me, it's the the ones I'm wearing now, the rookie of the year Ewings. Okay. I get those all the time where it's like because they look like a basketball like material, mm-hmm. and they're like 
this bright orange so people are like oh those are nice what's going on with those you yeah, know yeah. what's the history behind those or whatever they like those a lot but they're not like super hyped or anything i got them for like 40 bucks on ebay okay you know but they're a cool little flex shoe you know yeah what about you what do you got yeah uh i think anytime i wear like a pair of things with pink like C- the cdg 180s black mm-hmm. and pink uh agronom prestos those get a lot of like oh wow and I worn Sean Witherspoons, and uh, but those are such a that's such that's like one of those sneakers that like non sneaker heads like know what it is. I think like that's a shoe. Uh, that yeah, that, that did kind of transcend. I don't know really how. Maybe transcend. because of the contest or something. I don't know. Maybe just something about the the run the that promotion those have. for that. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. The promotion yeah. was good. Um, and I think it's Air Max Day. I think people people yeah. are very uh, aware of Air Max Day, even if you're not like a big time. It's true person who's in the shoes so it's um yeah you'll see ads all over the city if you're in like a big metropolis you'll see ads for air max day and you'll you'll be aware of it at yeah. least you know yeah. for and sure definitely that, those whopper spoons or wither uh i definitely see them more often than a lot of other hype shoes as yeah. far as like, yes. regular people wearing them mm-hmm. those yeah. are the wave runners i see a lot although the wave runners are way more common but uh yeah but yeah mm-hmm. it's kind of weird yeah yeah the 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 wave runners now let's talk about uh Let's talk a little bit about Adidas and, and Kanye because he's coming out with the new uh, seven hundred. Yeah, and they reduced. Yeah, they reduced the price from three hundred to two twenty. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if they did that con- like if it was uh, thinking of the consumer or if it was like just a convenient um, material drop down where they could afford it. But a lot of people are excited about that. Is it an yeah. actual different uh, model, is, or is it still the V two just with writing on the side? No, no, no. So the seven, it's got the seven hundred with like the seven hundred yes. letters yeah, on right, it. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he also has the 380, which originally were, I guess, the 350 version 3. Oh, uh-huh. the alien shits? Yeah, the alien yeah, joints. Yeah, yeah. Okay. if you look at them, look at that. It kind of looks like a little bit of digital camo going on there. <laughs> a little bit of team digital camo over here. <laughs> digital camo stinks. No, real wood is garbage. <laughs> you did the thing on, you did the poll on your Instagram. Right. You lost. And they're wrong. Except Everyone's it. wrong. <laughs> You're like uh, Sandra. Fucking... How do you feel? Digital, <laughs> I mean, digital or real wood? The only digi camo I got is the uh, Stephen Janowski's. Okay, the, uh, the SBs. All right, yeah. all right. Very nice, very nice. Pretty sure. So, what, what are we thinking about a, a price drop on the on the seven hundred model? Eighty dollars price drop. I'm thinking it's good because it's not like anyone who wants them. Th- these shoes are for everybody. You know what I yeah. mean? They're groupie shoes now. They're just, they're for everybody. So it's like the lower they price them, the better off it is for everybody buying them. So now we're we're getting the seven hundred um, Yeezy model and in, in the same price as a three fifty. Yeah. Right. Which is good. Which is good. Yeah. Right. Um, I, you know, he said it, and you know, he fucking he wasn't he lying. It. He said everyone is gonna if you want to pair. We laughed at him. We gonna... said it couldn't be done. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's so interesting, man, with Kanye because you look at the first, uh, the first, uh, the V ones, the three fifty V ones, and how, yeah. you know, no one. It was rare if you saw a person wearing a pair of V ones. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was. And and then you start looking at V twos, and they they were still kind of limited, but they weren't. You know, the beginning stages like the Oreos, and then they had the trip the three pack. They were kind of to the point where you know you some people still didn't get them, but now it's just fuck it. There's Yeezy <laughs> sitting on on everybody. Speaker. If yeah. you go, if you go to certain foot actions, there you know if you are in the right size, there's just they're just sitting on the shelves, bro. Yeah, I've literally seen like. We, we've joked about, like, moms buying their kids' shoes, and then, like, I'll get a pair. I've seen more moms wear Yeezys than I have any other shoe. <laughs> it's like, they it's outbeating Skechers now. It's like, it's, I'm like, where did you, <laughs> did just you just drop let your kid convince you? 20 on a whim? Yeah, like, what's wrong with you? But is that, like, a the good price of a shoe now? Is that what it is? What, 220 Yeah, is that, like, the median price? Is that normal? No, I think still think it's like one forty, one sixty. Yeah, I still think like one forty is yeah, like one maybe even one twenty. I would say is yeah, like the average. What's a typical Jordan that Foot Locker go for? Like one sixty, one eighty. Well, I mean, you, you look at retros. I mean, they're two hundred. Right. For the most part, like sixes, fours. Right. They're in the two hundred range. They're, they're in the two twenty range for yeah. sure. Sixes, yeah. seven. But if you go down to like ones are like one like well if you're talking mids they're like 120 right Mm -hmm. and then if you're talking blazers or sbs they'll be around the 140 160 range um as far as what breaks 200 in nike that's yeah it's jordan's jordan sixes sevens i I I think no i think you got in terms of nike yeah uh, you got adapts uh, too phone positive adapts LeBron models are right. up there, uh, you know. But like, then you were talking Adidas too. We have like the Don Ones dropped a while ago. Those were only a hundred bucks, you mm-hmm. know. So, so like if you mean average of all of the shoes, 
uh, out there, it'd probably be around 175, 180, somewhere around there. Like, to toe in the line of Damn. the 200s. This, yeah. like, era of sneakers, yeah. the inflation is going up way too high, if you ask me. And it's our fault because of what we're paying. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not what we're paying, but it's people see what people are willing to pay on the secondary market. Right. Right. And but they're that's... like, fuck that. We can, you know, why not? Uh, why don't we get a piece of that? You know? Yeah. When you got to realize when, when Jordans, and this is maybe like five, six years ago, yeah. when a pair of Jordans were priced at maybe like, you know, 180. Yeah. And, and then they were selling for 400. Nike's like, let's raise that. Yeah. F- even if it's $40 mm-hmm. and, and produce more. Because remember, there was a point when now, when you can get a pair of Jordans, you know, most Jordans, you, you're you not going to pay over retail if you, you know, if you're in a, a decent size. Like, you can get a pair of fours, bread fours, bread sixes, yeah. you know, whatever. Whereas maybe five, six years ago, it wasn't as, as easy for people to get, you know. So Nike sees this. They see this, and that's why they don't have a problem increasing it $40, $50. Yeah. What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, but uh, it's, it's kind of wild for me, especially because... A lot of my uh, sneaker experience, for the most part, has been while I was living upstate. So I didn't even get access to a lot of the shit. So right, the right. retail price, sure, I just gave up on from day one. I was like, yeah, I'm not hitting on any raffles. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no, they're not even getting. There's no tier zero accounts near me, so it's either resale or nothing. So when I hear the price of two twenty, I'm just like, oh, that's cheap, you know. Especially when my first sneaker cost me sixty three hundred bucks. Anything under five hundred, I'm like, oh, it's a steal. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no, no. But I'm I'm with you though, because like two twenty to me doesn't sound ridiculous, but it no. only sounds ridiculous when I think about what sneakers really cost like ten years ago. Right. Because mm-hmm. right. ten years ago, yeah, it sounds like a long time ago, but it's not. Right, right. No. Yeah, that's the other thing because you guys have uh, have that experience that I don't. Like I, when I came in, I was used to resale at oh. what it is now. Yeah, you know, so. So I mean, okay. So let me ask you a question. Do you? I mean, you like you have, like you said, over four hundred pairs. How many of those do you? You know, just an estimate. Do you think were purchased at retail? Oof, maybe eleven percent, probably less. Like <laughs> it's a very specific number. Yeah, it's like you did the <laughs> so you keep 40, a tally. Forty four <laughs> yeah. were purchased at retail. <laughs> Out of the yeah, I mean, I, I could count on my hand probably how many. Uh, I mean, I'd have to actually look, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, th- there's there's so few times that I'm able to find something that like I can walk into a Foot Locker and just get, mm-hmm. right. or, or something that I want that's usually there. Because usually the Yeezys that I wanted were never at Foot Locker. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, usually it's all these tier zero uh, type things I just can't mm-hmm. buy. But like off the top of my head, the things that I got GRs like we're talking like Stan Smith, Adidas Superstar. Um, I don't know, like a, a basic Flyknit Presto. Uh, you know, like a, just a handful of these things, but in general, I'm I'm usually going for like like when you talk about how like now they're flooding the market with Yeezys. It doesn't really bother me any, bother me anymore because once I've gotten that debut colorway of like a new silhouette, I'm good. Like mm-hmm. unless you yeah. blow me away with a new colorway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, usually, I mean, that. we've discussed this before, too. I don't know how they do it, but the first colorway is always the best colorway. Yeah. yeah. Every single time. I think, you know what it is? I think, like, if you put yourself in the mind of the collaborator or the whoever, the artist, quote, whatever, mm. that's working on the shoe, if it's a brand new shoe coming out, you're going to put so much effort into that first colorway because, like, yeah, you really want to impress. I yeah. never yeah. really thought about it like that. Yeah, like yeah it's, no, it's like anything else, I guess. Like, you know, everyone's first special is, like, their best special, right, arguably. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah based yeah. on that, every future colorway that comes out, you've already put out the blueprint and yeah. now they say, oh, how do we uh, yeah, remix yeah. this? You There's know? only a couple, like Red October is the perfect example that one like kind of triumphs yeah, all right. the original ones. Although right. I do like the other ones cut like technically better than the reds. I, I think a lot of people try, say the Red Octobers are the best because I think of the way they were released. <laughs> That's right. one, yeah. I, I think uh, the the Solars and even, I think all three of them are fucking amazing. Co- like they, to me, uh, yes, they yeah, it's not sure. one of those sneakers that you're like, this one is the definite one. But I feel like with the Solars and the Platinums, they both were released at the same time. They were released at Mercer. All these different accounts. Throughout, uh, Barney's had pairs. When you look at the Red Octobers, there was one tweet. Everyone remembers where the fuck they were at 1 p.m. on a Sunday <laughs> in February uh, of 2014. Everyone remembers what they were doing when yep. Nike dropped that tweet. So I think that's what people look at. And it's only released one way right yeah that was yeah. Crazy, and it was man. the very last nike, nike. kanye product there you that's go. true yeah. there you go so there you know when you look at stuff like that i mean yeah i'm mean, granted the uh, they're all great but i think you just have that oh man fucking red october is one way and they're the most you know exclusive people would yeah. look say it that way you know for sure 
I mean, <laughs> now I'm not. <laughs> me and Luke were looking at it earlier, and I didn't even see this until today before we started. But so Rick Ross and uh, Lee Ning are doing their way to way thing. Shut up. Hold on. <laughs> don't what? do the face. Don't do the face. Shut up. <laughs> hey, don't shut down on us, man. I'm shut down already. Shut <laughs> down. No, but they're releasing their own like Red October. They did an all red, red thing. Red Novembers, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> Maybe I, I sound like, you know, like fuck that, but there's only one Red October we respect. The only. <laughs> no, like, absolutely. The, the only. Christopher we respect is Wallace. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the only Christopher we acknowledge is Wait, Wallace. Wait, you're talking. Hey. Because my name is Christopher. Are you implying that you don't respect me? Uh, let's not get into that. Let's, that's not, a whole that's not, yeah, let's not do that. But, let's, you know. But yeah, I mean, anything. <laughs> we got popcorn for this? <laughs> <laughs> Any, that's my guy. It's, it's, that's just how we look. Like, so when you say like Rick Ross is doing his own red eye, it's like. Yeah, yeah. Bro. No, I was just using it as a segue. But they did come out. They're coming out. What's today? Uh, tomorrow. This, they uh, come October out tomorrow. 19th, they'll come out. These are the red Rick Ross leanings. Yeah. Uh, come <laughs> on. Okay, don't hate. I do like the other one though. The other one has With a the crown. Yeah, it has a removable crown and shit. There's two colorways. I like the black one a lot. But mm -hmm. that was the shit we were talking about before. Like when uh Rick Ross did a pull up with Joe Budden. He was talking about how he's like, you know, I'm kind of over like the, the market that's in the US. Like mm -hmm. I have my Reebok thing. Like they didn't really trust me. That's cool. I'm gonna go to China. Well, yeah. it's not Reebok didn't trust him. He just dropped the line where he said, you know, he pretty well, much Well, you know what I mean. And, they weren't like yeah. on board with that whole which I don't know if they were right or wrong. In this climate, I guess it's better to be safe than sorry if you're a big corporation like that. But they well, dropped him real quick. Well, I mean, they, you know, unfortunately, they had to. I don't know if you had to. I think you had to. It was too much heat on them, man. Yeah. This wasn't too even like this climate. This was, oh, no, this was 11 when that happened? I'm not 10 sure. 10 or 11, 12? Vine was still popular. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Happened. Yeah, Vine was still around. Yeah, are, you, are we going to start referring to ages by apps? That was the Vine era. Now we're in TikTok. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Why would you set that as a precedent? <laughs> I don't know. Why would you do that? Dude, I miss the Vine era, man. That yeah. Was, that was my shit. Yeah. yeah. Vine, era Vine era. Fire. Yo, Vine it. after dark, though? Oh. Look at that. Oh, you didn't even, oh, bro. You didn't even. You didn't even use Vine, bro. <laughs> yeah, you didn't really use Vine. I mean, I, Vine after dark. I used it after dark. I went to bed every night looking <laughs> at Vines, but I don't know where Vine after dark. Looking is. at the wrong stuff, man. <laughs> Just watch a goofy video of a, I don't know, 16-year-old. <laughs> um, but no, something else I wanted to, I wanted to talk about um, was, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I guess uh, it doesn't even matter what the, who the runner is because that's not what's important. But a runner um, just beat the two-hour mark in a marathon. But he's wearing these special Nike shoes that I guess a lot of runners who run professionally were looking, they're complaining about because they have these special carbon fiber plates. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, it wasn't an official marathon that he ran and broke the record in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't really recognize it as it. But he did do it. And everyone's kind of like, OK, so it's possible. But how do we feel about everyone look at the sneakers as being the reason why he did it? What sneaker is it? It was, um, oh, I'll, I'll look up the name of it. But it was like some new, uh, cover me, hold on. Uh, could always just be some sort of weird press coverage for new Nike sneakers. Nike mm -hmm. is just one of those companies that can market in that form where it's like, oh, well, we'll, t we'll make it a controversial thing about the sneakers when, you know, are we not, we're not going to judge the merits of the man who, you know, who ran or a woman. I don't know who ran. So it's a man. I'm trying to find the name it's of the man. I'm okay. trying to find the name of the sneakers. Those are the sneakers though. They're like one of the popular running sneakers that are Yeah, was not uh yeah, they were working that before. What was it? The yeah. Other? So the campaign was called Breaking 2. Uh -huh. Um Shit, what the fuck is the name was of the that? Shoes? The uh... Yeah, it's like one of their newer running models. Yeah, the Zoom X uh, cushion. All these shoes, uh, Zoom X Vapor Fly Next Percent. It's like, all right, what, how many th things are you going to add to the name <laughs> of this yep. fucking shoe? But it was a one hour, 59, 40 second um, run time. But wow. this reminds me, because we discussed this before with the, the band, uh, you can jump higher shoes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, this also makes me think of Lance Armstrong and the Tour de France when he was, you know, roiding up or whatever. Mm -hmm. I want them to, well, let them wear the shoes. Let them wear the shoes that make them do ill shit. No. Because yeah, it's more entertaining, right? If yeah. everybody's wearing the, the ill shoes, then, you know, there's no advantage anymore, right? Yeah. If that's the case, mm -hmm. everybody should have that technology in their shoes. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't given it that much thought. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't really. I mean, I care because all these technologies end up being in our lifestyle sneakers. Right. That's true. So I, I try to pay attention when the first stuff comes out, like when the Hyper React came out. Like when I, we always try to figure out what we're, what's, where it's going to go. And mm -hmm. it's always going to end up on our casual shoes yeah. at, by, you know, the fifth year, fourth year, they're out. But if if this is just making like eighty year olds run fucking, 
marathons under two hours. Like, yeah, let me get him for walking. Like, what? Just let him do it. Why do you guys complain? I mean, they have Zoomax out for maybe not lifestyle models yet, but uh, but I mean, they put they put out what was it? The uh, there was a Vaporfly four percent. Yeah, there was. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that was more of a performance running model. But uh, yeah, I tried it. The cushioning was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How does it feel? Did you walk around him? Or yeah, was a little bit. Yeah, I wore him to work one day. I think I've only mm-hmm. worn him like twice. But uh, did you it's Google a little wonky? But... Did you Google Maps? See how long it would take you to walk somewhere, no. and then just beat that shit I by three fucking, minutes. No, dude, I, I hate fucking, jogging. I you hate spit running. on Google Maps. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I mean, outside of, especially back when I bought it, when I was living upstate, like it was either car, work, garage. Like that was it. There was no, right. unlike New York, where you're just constantly walking, which is dope. But, yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, not to change gears or anything, but uh, Cactus Plant uh, Flea Market is having another collab with Nike. Yeah. Uh, we thoughts. We excited. Anyone? Anyone want to ID a pair of uh, pair of Air Force Ones? I'm not really excited, but I'm happy for anyone that is. Yeah. I don't really like that. I don't really like those shoes that came out. I didn't like the Vapor Max. I didn't like these ones are seem forced to. It's okay. I just yeah. don't yeah. like that it came out for a thousand bucks plus, you know, resale. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. When you got to the bigger sizes, that's when it became a thousand dollar shoe. I mean, smaller sizes, you know. I mean, the Va- the Vapor Max already has a high entry price point already when it comes out. Right. So, I mean, just add that to the fact that it's a collab, and the f- I think it, it, it retail at two fifty. Yeah. And then people were flipping them for a thousand dollars. I kind of like the Air Force ones. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if that's something because I I'm I like the up tempos the the uh, Pippins, but you know it's going to be interesting to see them on an Air Force One, and the fact that you can't really customize them too much. You can only put either Air Flea or Air Sunshine, right? Yeah, and uh, it's either a White Force or a Black Force. Did you guys see the? You guys saw the Blazers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did not see the. You did not see the. Bla- you did not. So they, uh, you can cust- You actually could customize. Uh, These are out already. The Blazers were on Nike Bayou. Okay. Uh, they were up for. Uh, 50 minutes before they sold out. Oh, <laughs> love that. And, uh, love that. I'm surprised it got to 50. Uh, yeah. It was, it's usually f- 50 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, people were able to customize different uh, blazers. Oh, these remind me of the baby bears, the Nike yeah, SB the, baby bears. Yes. Yes. They definitely have, like, so people uh, had different, you know, colors. and It wasn't that many uh, exclusive options, but. How it, much were those running for? I don't remember how the price were. Uh, 140, I believe. That's not bad. Not Damn. This would have been my one shot to actually own a pair of, like, <laughs> faux baby bears. They're my sh- those are my grails. I want yeah. those so bad, but I don't know how I'll, I'll ever wear them. Pra- like they're not a practical shoe at all. They got like nah. the weird fur on them. I don't know. There's some good apparel that came that's, that's coming. I out. do like the teal the teal bomber jacket's pretty nice. Yes, yeah, that one's pretty nice. Yes, the teal bomber. Yes, I actually like that as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that one's cool. I uh, like that. I didn't like the like the w- yeah with the air on the shirt like the with the the up tempo graphic that he had on it. Right. I didn't like that shit. I was like, this is a little get cut and paste for me. No, the, yeah, that the this air the, sun, yeah, yeah these like joints these. are wild. The the beige joint and then the white joint. But I definitely like the uh the um the jacket, the pull the pullover. Yeah, I, for sure. Yeah. I think that's something I actually might go after um soon cuz that's kind of fire. You can wear that with pretty much anything and get away with it. It's fucking fire. They did a good job. Cynthia, she's on the come up. She's yeah. like, you know, some of the things she's like, you know, whether it's the the Yay Must Be Born Again hoodie that dropped earlier this year yeah. or like Drake's you know, favorite hoodie. Yeah, I mean, it's a great, <laughs> great hoodie. Um, it's a great hoodie. You got, you know, like I said, the Vapor Max. Uh, I wasn't the biggest fan of them, but they are very. But good it's shoe. very like what what's nice about it is though, like it's very much on brand with Cynthia's stuff, right? Yes. So it's like if you look at that shoe, you'd be like, I know, mm. and you look at something from this collab, you'd be like, I know somebody made this and also made this as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, Which mm-hmm. is very hard to do in today's market. It's very tough to kind of differentiate yourself. It's mm-hmm. so impressive how quickly she's uh, you know, kind of yeah, you know, developed that brand. That's crazy. sure. Yeah. Well, she hit a stride. First time yeah. we really saw her, her work was uh, on LeBron James' feet when he had the uh, the Converse with the Nike uh, with the bootleg Nike swoosh. Yeah, Ooh. that was uh, that was like last year NBA Finals 2018. <clears throat> it's all it took. Yeah, she was and, fire. And and everyone was like, "What the fuck?" And it was you know, 
It's very cool. Things took off, and thing you know, I think that's Nike is always they're like they're looking for the new the the next big collab yeah. with someone. Well, speaking of the next big collab, <laughs> I have an idea for all of us today. <laughs> now, Sadra, you you may not know as I've joined the new <laughs> as the new third host of the show, uh, I'm trying to push more merch. Uh, <laughs> so today I have a Doctor Souls <laughs> sub podcast collab. <laughs> We're doing scrubs this week, man. We're doing scrubs. Dude, I've been meaning to put on my own scrubs. So, so. here we go. Uh, First of all, we've got the sub podcast. We've got a sub cut podcast, Dr. Soul's embroidered <laughs> logo right on the chest. <laughs> We're going to do like a little chest logo. So <laughs> I, that's that's part of the charm of them, baby. You that's start part of the charm of them. You got to start somewhere. Oh, look at it. It makes me lightheaded. Uh, exactly. <laughs> all right. So, there's a lot of things going on here. I got options. I got to take off my jacket. I got <laughs> options for, for us by today. The way, I wore my. Uh, Bogo for you guys. Thank just you. To fit the theme of the podcast. Oh, there you go. Look, Look at, at him. You. Look at Team flexing. Player. I like it. Flexing on all the audio listeners too. So I'm rolling up my sleeves because we're we're about to sell real hard. All right. <laughs> First of all, we're gonna do black scrubs because that's you know what are we doing here if we're not getting imaginative? You know, are we? You know, <laughs> can I suggest navy? I feel like it would work a lot better for a lot more. How dare you, options. sir? <laughs> <laughs> sir, why let me do wait. my job. Why don't, don't we do for midnight navy? <laughs> why don't we do red midnight scrubs? Navy. Hilarious. Red scrubs? Yeah. What? Fuck it. Leave this to professionals. All right, Chris. <laughs> I'm the professional in the room. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I've brought two merch ideas to this show. You've brought zero. <laughs> All right, keep going. All right. So first of all, on the front, we've got the embroidered sub podcast <laughs> X Doctor Souls right there on as the logo. All right, and then we've got on the back of the shirt here. I thought of doing. Why don't we do what you know? What do people associate doctors with? Defibrillators. What do people like <laughs> <Really>? shoes? Right. <laughs> I hope not. Jesus. So we got a pair of sh uh, uh, Jordan ones. With like little defibrillator things on the on the ha like <laughs> handles, and then a little bit of electricity coming off of them. That's on the back. Like think of like a weird Travis Scott level design okay. right there. Mm -hmm. And then uh huh uh huh uh huh. And then as the bottoms, what are we gonna do with the bottoms? We'll put pockets that have little pills on them, or they just say <laughs> drugs on them because right. we want we want to really push. Hey, there might be drugs in here. You should probably <laughs> check my pockets. You know? I can tell you right now, this uh, strikes me as. A only an outfit for the Met Gala. Okay. Yeah. Right. Ah, <laughs> right. Met Gala, Met Gala time. Yeah. Right. What's the tool you use the most at your job? The tool I use? Yeah. yeah. So instead of <laughs> defibrillators, because I don't think you're <laughs> using defibrillators. Yeah, nah. <laughs> have you even touched defibrillators before? I have. I, I've used them. I've oh, used nice. Them. Hell yeah. Ha, uh, joke's on you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually, correct once again But usually it, I don't like it only because Usually when you get to that defibrillator stage, you're pretty much dead. Yeah, right. it's not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you technically are dead. When, when you go to shock someone, they're technically literally dead yeah and you're trying to shock them back to life so uh, uh and and i forget the exact okay. statistic i'm just but gonna I write say like 93 percent of the time <laughs> <laughs> game over i'm just gonna put needs work here but i mean know. i like the thunderbolt idea maybe uh -huh. there's something there you know yeah yeah yeah. Life, yeah, yeah. electricity uh -huh. electric uh -huh. but, uh, well you are a gastrointestinal yeah. doctor so maybe we make the electricity come out of the butt maybe. <laughs> like uh -huh. a little poop emoji or uh -huh. something maybe. hell yeah dude maybe yeah. No, but what is like the the, big, yeah, like what's the the tool you use the most? I mean, I use endoscope, so I'm using big hoses that I shove in the ah, cavities. So uh -huh. that's that's the main tool I use, uh -huh. uh, other than my finger. Okay, <laughs> hell yeah, dude. All right, maybe it's a giant finger. <laughs> 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 Listen, we've got ideas here. Is what we're saying. I, I'll consider your midnight navy. All right, all right, all right. I'll consider yeah, it's your compromise, baby. It is a collab situation. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else want to throw in on this idea? Um, uh, I'm thinking. We got to do something with the bottoms. Uh, uh, the drug thing was, uh, you know, <laughs> as I'm pitching it now, it seems kind of stupid. I don't know where to go from here. Yeah, I don't know where to go either. You know what? Yeah. Though, there's only been one company to come out with scrubs and it was that wasn't like a medical company. It was Echo. Right. Echo? Was Echo? Yeah, did you ever wear those? No, I, I thought uh, Virgil put out like a, a set of scrubs too. Oh, did he? Oh, did yeah. he? I didn't I mean, know if he did, but I know... They um, had Swiss cheese holes I in remember... Them? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. We could put Swiss cheese holes in these too, <laughs> right in the butthole, right, in the butthole. <laughs> yeah, right. with the electric coming out. <laughs> I'm assuming these are uh, tapered legs. I'm a big fan. Of, of that. course, That's tapered legs. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, just, just show off the sneakers more. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's Skinny what I did. Scrubs? I actually I took a pair of scrubs because because they always come in boot cut because uh, you know medicine is not about fashion, obviously. So uh, I took a pair of my scrubs and I took them to a tailor and I got them customized. To so be you tapered. take notes. Yeah, but uh, but mm -hmm. I, they need work. I need to make like a secondary prototype because I really did want to sell them at some point. But yeah, uh, but yeah, we can talk. 
We yeah, can talk. Yeah, Off White uh, created a pair of uh, Off White and Equinox created scrubs for a good cause. Uh, oh wow! And proceeds went to Cycle for Survival. So hell yeah! Uh, starting my- five hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> okay, a, a scrub sweatsuit. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, five hundred. If bucks, my doctor came in go. with Off White scrubs on, I'd be like, "Fucking hell yeah, dude! <laughs> Tell me how much weed I'm allowed to smoke." <laughs> I don't. I'd be like, "I think your priorities are a little not <laughs> focused on my health." I think if you're trying to be, I get like being a fly doctor, but don't be fly during my appointment. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said earlier, too, no one really even notices because uh, well, no, yeah. you're in the hospital. You're shoes sick. are different. Shoes yeah, are different. Yeah, yeah shoes say, are different. Yeah, shoes no, are I'm not saying the shoes, but if you came in so like don't a, shit on the man. Yeah, no, 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 no. If you go in the hospital to have surgery or or you got stomach problems, I don't think you give a fuck about what your doctor. <laughs> yeah. just keep me alive, yeah. bro. That's well, all. no, my thing is, is like if there's a guy wearing like a nice track suit that's my doctor and he's gonna be worried about like shit getting on it, then I'm yeah. like, all right, maybe. <laughs> I don't oh. want you as my doctor. The shoes are fine. Wear the shoes. because you, you Do you wear the covers on your shoes, too? Because no. then what's the point? I might as well just wear... Oh, damn. You're yeah, just raw-dogging oh, it right. in there. Well, you <laughs> got to remember, too, like when I'm up against the, the table... I put my chest and, and my belly up to the table, so and, and my feet are under the table, so they never get exposed to any kind of fluids. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Nice. Damn. No. Now, you're you're a big John Elliott fan. Yeah, I'm wearing them right now, baby. I know, I know. Ooh. Escobar? Escobar sweats? Yeah, yeah. only Escobar. Ooh. Only Escobar. Ooh. Do you wear other uh, John Elliott uh, items besides sweats or what? Is J.E. Uh, gang gang. Other than the, uh, the icons, the LeBron icon sneakers, I don't think I, uh, nah, I don't I'm, think so. I always see this gentleman wearing John Elliott sweats, man. It, it is. is. I'm telling you, next month, the, uh, what is it, the Black Friday sale, just get any and all just colors. Go ev- yeah. Just go fucking ham. go ham on John <laughs> Elliott's website. Like you said, Black Friday <laughs> It is what it is. I'm just going to be spending a lot of money on John Oh, yeah, Elliott. it's coming up. Yeah. yeah, I'm going ham on the APC stuff. That's usually when I get all my APC like hoodies and stuff. Black it's Friday, during yeah. Black Friday time. Ooh, um, actually, now that you brought up APC, uh, yeah. Adidas took a fucking page out of APC's book, and they have a uh, return program now. I think it's only in the UK, but if you bring in you can uh, old shit, you can get credit. Huh. But we covered APC doing that a while ago. Oh, fun stuff. Yes. So, yes. yeah, mm. so shout out to Adidas. The sustainable stuff is really coming in hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's why I think that uh, fucking 700s are cheaper. I like the, you can swap the program. It's nice. You know, we're not fucking mm-hmm. destroying the earth as fast as we were. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's move forward here. Mm-hmm. And Lawrence, as our Supreme Correspondent, do we have any update? And how do you feel about those nail things? Did you see that post? No, I didn't see the post. What was the post? It was a post that they met up with a, uh, not met up, but they collabed with a motivational speaker, and then they uh-huh. posted this chick like with these long ass nails, uh-huh. mm-hmm. long ass nails, saying like you should have like a supreme day or whatever. It was very interesting. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is cool. I thought about the burner phone for a second this week. <laughs> did you sh- did you shoot for it? <laughs> nah, I, I was like, I, I was like, fuck it, I don't, I'm good. Because yeah. then I'll get it, and then it's just like, uh, what am I wasting my money on burner phones? I can't imagine anyone actually like using that a burner phone. Though. Yeah, what no. do you, do? you put it on a what little stand doing? in your room? Yeah. That's it. It's more like a desk ornament. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah like, no, yeah. it's like as useful as the brick. Yeah, yeah. No, but the brick you could make stuff with. Yeah, <laughs> the brick is more useful. I could make a fire pit out of the fucking bat heat right there. So let me. Ask you, I want to. This is another. I'm sorry. I just. I'm looking at your Instagram. And, you know, I've been doing this. Yeah, you know, I always do this. And what's your? Uh, I see you wearing the Sakai's. And that's, uh, I've said this on the podcast, I think those are the shoe of the year. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with me or not? Yeah, I agree. Because I know you guys are debating like Travis Scott versus uh, Sakai. I'm not, like, I I respect Travis Scott, but like I I never connected enough with him as an artist. Probably because I'm too old now, I'm 32. But uh, uh, yeah, I just, I I respect all his sneaker collabs. I just can't connect with them. And I, I feel like maybe in the future, in the big picture things, I feel like his hotness now with the sneakers is going to go the way of like the um the g-unit sneakers like they were mm-hmm. hot at the time but then g-unit fell off 50 fell off and then the sneakers kind of fell off i feel like yeah. it could go that way but who knows i, I think the, maybe i think no i think you know I, I think the travis scott's will remain hot because they gave him great uh models like uh, jordan yeah. one is a timeless model yeah that's true that's yeah true. Uh, uh the fours same thing uh, the colorway is a little hot, but yeah. uh, it's still a. The sixes aren't as iconic as the ones in the forest to me, but they're still such a strong. Mo- it's not like right. they were draking him, if that yeah. makes sense. They weren't yeah. like, here's a 10. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't give him a 10. Here's a 12. Right. All right. You know, <laughs> well, you could do whatever you want with it. You know, it, it, it never. Here's an eight. You know, it was. <laughs> yeah. These are three of our most popular 
models. Right. Yeah. I would say too the uh, the Jordan fours. I thought I was the most impressed by because like incorporating the whole Houston Oilers story. I was like, damn, he put in way more effort into yeah. this than I expected. I yeah. did like the fours. More, yeah, no, more they gave so him else. they gave him a lot of like leeway to figure out like a story and a play with it. Yeah. And it's interesting too because I read that um they're gonna give Kendrick a Air Force in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I kind of think they're gonna taking the Travis Scott model and applying it to you know I think they tried it with like some of the other guys they had as far as artists there, but now they're I think they're really gonna focus on rappers being like the you know forefront yeah. face of all these shoes which well, well i always wondered well, if if nike had kind of given kanye more leeway yeah how, where he would have taken it with nike if that makes sense yeah because now i think you know what's so crazy to me is nike they they them and him and them and kanye had like this rocky relationship towards the end and then it got to the point where Nike was like, "Hey, Kanye's friends, uh, we'll let you do whatever you want." Don, Don C. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you want you want to you want to make people pay six hundred and fifty dollars for a pair of sneakers just that comes with it. a hat? Just go <laughs> for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, man. Just Virtual, do it. you want you want to fucking have a thousand models go? Like it's it, they yeah. allowed his friends to kind of have a little bit more control. Of, and even Travis, because Travis is a Kanye disciple, and right. now it's like the way. Like I was listening to an interview with uh, Chase B. Uh, uh, Trav's DJ and shit like that and he was just like yo Nike just let us go in there do our thing you know we were the ones who came up with the backwards swoosh you know yeah. and whereas so whereas with Kanye it was kind of like alright here's these three models here's this you know and granted well somebody got fired for sure well, when well, Kanye left <laughs> yeah but you know it's funny because when you look at Kanye Kanye had even though Virgil, he took existing models, and Trav took models. Kanye shits were still his. Yeah, thoughts. And yeah, they were vision. original pieces. You know, so it's just you just wish that they gave him a little bit more. Uh, do you have Do you have any easy ones? Yeah, I have the uh, the blinks, uh, the black and pink ones. Okay. Uh, Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, to me yeah, they nice. they were the most iconic. I know they didn't come out technically first. I think what the they, the tan they, ones came out first. No, the uh, Zens Zen came Gray. out first. Yeah. Blinks and tans. Right. Uh, but yeah, to me that that colorway, especially leading into the solar reds with the twos, mm -hmm. and then when he debuted the shoes, it wasn't obviously the uh, the exact blink colorway, but it was the closest to it. So I was like, you know, I'm just gonna go with these. I had a I had a listener. Uh, well, he's one of my he's a comic, and I gotta find his uh, his IG. And he asked me, he was like, you know, we uh, we talked about because he had a pair of Zens, and he was like, he sold them. And uh, and then he asked me how much I paid for my tans, and at the time, it was ten years ago, I paid like close to six hundred dollars. <sighs> yeah. And when you look back at that, not even bad at all. No. Well, no, now it's like, oh, six hundred dollars. Oh, that's great. But when you ten years ago, I think I was more. I was embarrassed to tell my friends, "Yo, I spent six hundred dollars on yeah. pair of Nikes." Yeah, yeah. People would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> you know, we gotta give you some some credit because you took a lot of risk on a lot of sneakers yeah, early, and they've paid dividends. Jaspers, <laughs> yeah. Kanye Nikes, yeah. You had an embarrassing couple of years, yeah, 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 but now yeah. you're coming up on top. You're like, yo, I'm the fucking man right yeah. now. Well, I mean, you just you just look at, you know, you see shit, and you kind of, like you said, it's almost like you do. when do you jump in? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. When you see him. Let's see. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part, too. It's like, I wish, A, that I could, like, go into a store and try these on at least. Yeah. B, just give me, like, a few months to at least, like, sit on it. Yeah. But like no, you don't have time. It's like, dude, get it now or pay way more later. And who knows how much more? It's like, who knows? Oh. Yeah, you know. Yeah, now this shit's he can't really fucking like figure out where any of this is gonna go. It makes makes less sense than stocks, <laughs> like actually, because stocks like people like can figure out the math on it. Like this, there's like a for formula, but sometimes you're like, wait, why is this one a thousand dollars? This is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, it no, makes no sense. Like no one cared about this up, up until it came out. The only thing I could see with the sneaker uh, stock market aspect of it uh continuing to appreciate is the fact that like there's so much nostalgia attached to these things like un unlike stocks where it's like purely a transaction like, yo i just want to make money on this mm -hmm. i'm going to day trade it i'm going to do this i'm going to hold it for a few years and sell it i don't i don't like personally care about the stock attached to this whereas with the sneaker it's like this personal connection either that you have to the sneaker or that a potential kid coming up who's like looking up to the sneaker as their grail in the future will want for like who knows how much yep more, you know? yep I am a little worried about the back end of all of this shit. Like, you know, because I've complained about Foot Locker buying into a bunch of these resale, mar secondary market um, sale floors. Uh, but also, so I was reading something recently where they were talking about, I guess Ben Baller did a thing on StockX for he had some slides come out. And they didn't put the retail price of what the slides were on the raffle thing. So mm -hmm. you, it was like an auction. It was like a bid. Like, think of an eBay auction. Mm -hmm. But they didn't put what the retail of it was 
they let the the market the decide. bid determine what the shoes were worth. Mm-hmm. So there, it was like they were being resold before they even came out with the retail price. Yeah, did you hear about this? I, I recently got invited to an Adidas event uh, locally at a at a local boutique, Extra Butter. I don't know if Extra you Butter. Yeah, yeah, Extra yeah. Butter. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Extra uh, Butter. Those guys are great. Yeah, and they um, they had this Adidas event where they brought these creators that uh, went off to um, uh, to the factory at Adidas to design their own uh, campus model, mm-hmm. and then those campus models. Now uh, there's three designers, and each of those designers' shoes now are going to debut on StockX as an IPO. Yes, oh. you know? and so and then on top of that, each designer their um, their royalty they now have royalties based on how well that sneaker does in the resale market with that IPO. So they personally benefit from designing a whatever spectacular uh, yeah. product. That it, it's sell. a little troublesome to me that this ha- is going to be so not. It's so loose, I guess. I don't know how to really right. phrase it, but like, they, they, generally it should be like, this is how much they cost. You double that, that's the, re, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there should be a formula, but now it's all loosey goosey. Yeah, there's no, there's no formula. Yeah, there's, there's shoes that are people's entire salaries. There's literally <laughs> the mags. Some people will make less than what that shoe sells for. Some. Their yeah, entire a lot, life. A lot of people. They will not make that much money in a year. A lot of people will. Yeah, yeah. and it's nuts. Yeah. Dude, I saw a size nine going for like three million or some shit like that. No, yeah, dude, impossible. On StockX, I don't know if it's still there, but uh, yeah. But it was weird. It was like that size nine was like one million. I think it was like one point three million. Sorry, and then uh, like the size eleven was like I don't know forty thousand or twenty six thousand, mm. something like that. So it's yeah, like no, kind it's... of weird range, but yeah. I mean, people looking for hopefully you know the come up of the the come ups. You know, hopefully I know Offset fucking says, "Yo, I'll, I'll buy another pair of mags." You know. When I was reading this thing about the Ben Baller slides, though, it didn't, like, no one did, like, the Price is Right thing where they put a dollar to see what happens. <laughs> yeah. And I'm kind of thinking, like, like, why would no one do that? So they, if, because if I thought of it, someone, because I'm not smart, someone must have thought of that mm-hmm. with me thinking about it. Yeah. So they probably have a limiter on how low you can bid, mm-hmm. which I assume must be the retail. It's just, I, I got very worried about this kind of thing, because then all the power gets put off into the, st- well, we'll just say mm-hmm. stockings, the platform. Yeah. Well, it becomes a much more consumer-based market then, right? Because yeah, and we're all wrong because yeah, we, we, we're terribly wrong. Yeah, some of us are paying a lot of money for shoes that are shoes that aren't. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Very true. Um, it, but I do like the that the designer gets a cut. Like yeah, a good that is fire. Cut. That's I do like good. that. That's good. That's mm-hmm. a good thing. Uh, how do you find a balance between, uh, you know, the like commercial set price and this like reseller market? How do you find that? that in between for mm-hmm. like the designer to be able to get paid pretty well too. Uh, that's the big question, right? Of course. How do we get how do we get that to I mean I think a lot of it's gonna down. come down to well first of all they, they do announce how many pairs they've made of each shoe. I think it came down to nine hundred and ninety nine I think total, so three hundred and thirty three each. Uh, of the three designers that made them, uh, at least in this example. Right. Secondly, I think it's just going to become just like the regular stock market where it's speculative. It's like, oh, I think this this one's going to pop off. This is a fire colorway. Let's, it's, you know. Yeah. yeah, let's invest in this yeah. one. Uh, who knows? I don't know. Uh, it could also potentially mean that we'll be getting some pretty fire sneakers for for the low because people will just yeah, pass up on yeah, them. Yeah, because that's the other thing. If Potentially how they market a particular model coming out, if right. they do like a off-white level rollout or a Witherspoon level level rollout, you know, that's probably going to dictate a lot of it too. That's true. You know. uh, on, a, on a more happy note, <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck's ready for the NBA season, guys? Yeah. Bro. Preseason Knicks looking good. <laughs> well, looking good. We're going all the way this year. I was more so uh, excited about seeing uh, some of the fits that these dudes are about to <laughs> no. pull up. No, I'm telling you, yo, the Houston Rockets uh-huh. are about to be the most between Harden, Harden Westbrook, Westbrook yeah. PJ Tucker, like bro, like Eric Gordon. They're going to these guys are going to try to like outdo each other every night. Yo. Yeah, I saw PJ walking into the to the stadium on the preseason game with Adidas. And the first thing I went through my head is, yo, is Adidas about to give P.J. Tucker a crazy bag? Because everyone that knows P.J. Tucker knows he's a Nike boy. Yeah. yeah. Like, we know P.J. Tucker is a straight-up Nike guy. And uh, he was he came into uh, the arena uh, against the Spurs a couple days ago wearing uh, 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 NMDs, uh, the uh, hmm. the Pharrell. Uh, the nerd. The nerd Ooh. NMDs. And he was wearing a pair of, uh, he had a pair of 500s in his hand. So everyone's speculating. They're like, "Yo, it's, what's happening? What, the fuck's what a hard going on? flex to, <laughs> to carry one into." Oh, well, that's man. what they do. That's what a lot of these guys. Yeah, I a just lot started of these noticing 
that last year. Like they they come in with the fit with mm-hmm. the pair of sneakers, but then they're also carrying a pair. They're like, yo, I couldn't choose, so I just carry my other <laughs> so pair. This in. is my this is my accessory today. Yeah, uh, that's great. <laughs> it's just it's their accessory. No, it's true. It's, it's, it's an accessory. Like their purse. It's an accessory. Yeah. It's an accessory. Yeah. You got to hold it in your hand. In purse. If I see people walking around New York City wearing two uh, carrying a pair of shoes, I'm gonna <laughs> throw rocks at them. So. <laughs> Between between the Rockets and the Lakers, we're gonna be like, you know, we're gonna be like, what the fuck? Because you know, you got LeBron, uh-huh. you got AD, you got Kuz, uh-huh. you got on the Rockets, you got Harden, Westbrook, and PJ. You got some dudes that are about to like, you know, Kuz might be a. I think he just signed. He signed with Puma. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and we don't know what the PJ Tucker is a free agent, but PJ Tucker has spent so much money on I I think he spent so much money on Nikes that he has to take an Adidas deal to recoup all the money <laughs> that he spent on Nikes. Yo, they about to pay someone's about to pay his ass a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, those Oregon PEs must have sent him back at least like three mortgages. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's insane. <laughs> What's the best pair he's worn? I mean, he's worn. I mean, he's worn Red Octobers. He's worn. Try friends and family. Yeah, didn't uh, he debut the Fear of Gods? Air Fear of Gods. Fear of Gods. Yeah. yeah. Him and I think Kuzma were one of those guys that debuted him. That's like a, a lot of so yeah, sad. dude. He's he has so much <laughs> heat, bro. Yeah. And all the like half the shoes like break on him. Like in the, yeah, <laughs> the soles just fall off and shit. What makes it so funny? Is PJ is a solid. You know, he's a role player. Right. Yeah. He's a guy that's gonna get you, you know, maybe eight points, you know, eight rebounds, a lot of hustle. Yeah. He's not a guy who's scoring thirty a game, but he is known for being the sneaker guy. Yeah. Like that's PJ Tucker's thing. Oh yeah, he's created a brand in the NBA that doesn't involve playing like at a top tier level. At a, which at is a superstar amazing. Level. Yeah. Which is, is great. Uh, good more power to him. Mm-hmm. For a guy that he played overseas and then he he kind of got back in the league a few years ago. Like yeah. he's, I mean, the last like five or six years, he is just. We know him as a sneaker guy. Yep. Yeah, he like it. He, it was like there was rumors that PJ was gonna get traded uh, in the off season. Everyone's like, "Wait, so you gonna break up him and Harden?" Like, <laughs> like James Harden and PJ Tucker are like they're like BFFs in terms of like who can outdo who in in fashion. Right, and you <laughs> add Russell Westbrook to the equation. Oh my god, I love Russell, man. Love Russ. Love Russell. Also, now we and we also got a big story that we didn't talk about last week, or we talked about a little bit a about little it. Bit. China, but China. Ooh, don't look at me like I'm supposed no, to have all, all the answers. answers. Luke, like, all right, listen. Yeah, Luke, you are the, right. you're the Asian representative. Let's dog. break it down. GM of the of the Houston Rockets, correct? Daryl Morey. Daryl Morey talked mm-hmm. about. Uh, he's like, uh, go go Hong Kong, mm-hmm. and China was like, Mm-mm, not liking that. Not, not a big all. fan of that. Not so all. especially uh, Yao Ming. Yao Ming in particular <laughs> was like, I don't. If I like that comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were like, all right, we're going to not talk about the Houston Rockets at all. That's where it all started. Mm-hmm. Where everyone was like, oh, that's going to be very weird. You're going to talk about, like, mm-hmm. oh, the Lakers were playing name redacted today, you know, <laughs> with player uh, James, who fucking gives a shit, you know? <laughs> They're going to just be, like, petty about it. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. Mm-hmm. But then uh, as the days came by, uh, China was like, no, nah, we're pulling all all NBA stuff all together, right? They were mm-hmm. pulling all sponsorship, yeah, and uh, taking them out of the market. We thought we weren't even going to get to see the Nets play mm-hmm. that one day. Nets uh, Lakers, yeah, Nets Lakers. We didn't yeah. even we we weren't we thought we weren't going to see them, yeah. yeah. But they ended up doing the game anyway because the the fans love it. Mm-hmm. The fans love it. But uh, now what with LeBron coming out recently and saying like, oh, he didn't understand the ramifications what did he say exactly? what made it so great was lebron was like i don't understand everything that's going on yeah but <laughs> yeah but he didn't understand yeah he didn't understand <laughs> because there's a lot of fucking money involved right and y'all fucking up people everyone money. keeps double backing they like yeah. they're like i don't know i'm just gonna say this and then they go like well i didn't mean that yeah, i'm yeah, just yeah. saying I'm in just general saying, yeah. like in general like <laughs> just saying like maybe uh here at sub podcast we have a hard stance against the chinese government go <laughs> 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 Go Hong Kong, long live the revolution. <laughs> you know what's wild to me though? I can't think of another precedent like this as far as like a professional uh, American sports league so dependent on a foreign, foreign dollar. Yeah, yeah. well, know? no, it's not even just that. It's just like there's a lot of markets right now that are very highly dependent 
on the Chinese market. You've got, you know, MC, uh, Marvel movies yeah, are yeah, all yeah. very heavily based Hollywood on... Hollywood in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all heavily, uh, like, has a, a lot yeah. of influence on, like, the Chinese. And then, well, you yeah. know... Well, we, you, the NFL, I mean, you look at the NFL, and, and they're like, yo, fuck it, we gonna, like, all we care about is Alabama, yeah. Kentucky. <laughs> Roll Tide, bitch! <laughs> yeah, all we care <laughs> What's about good? is down south. Yeah. We're, we're trying to expand into London, but if they don't like it, we don't give a fuck, <laughs> and, <laughs> they had a game in Mexico City. It's supposed to be the Chiefs versus the the Rams last year. It's supposed to be this yeah. big game, and uh, the field was like quote unquote not doing well. But <laughs> Mexico City was like, nah, we can get this shit together. NFL was like, nah, fuck y'all, we're yeah, going yeah. back to LA. We're going and, back uh, to LA. And but the NBA is so like worldwide, yeah, right? Yeah. And and you so the ramifications do something about the salary cap might go down. Yeah, you know we're talking fifteen percent. So now players are being affected by it because they're not going to make as much oh, money. Oh, because and one dude tweeted. One tweet. One tweet. Yeah, what was that? Was this like an, another classic Ambien tweet? Like, what was... Uh, no, it no. Was, it, it wasn't even Ambien. It was just he, him showing support for Hong Kong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess he probably had it in his ear because, you know, the Houston Rockets are kind of like technically China's They're quote, They're kind of yeah. known for being mm-hmm. China's yeah, team. They had Jeremy Lin for a little bit, the god. Uh, <laughs> Yao you know, Ming. For Yao Ming. You know, yeah. that's, yeah. that's where it probably hurt Yao Ming the most. Mm-hmm. Was like, oh, dude, not you, Daryl. Come yeah, on, man. He's the president of the Chinese basketball league, and he's like, "What am I supposed to do? I gotta cancel it. Yeah, That's cancel. what I gotta yeah. do. That's what I gotta do." <laughs> do you guys remember when Shaq, when uh, Yao Ming got drafted, was talking shit, and he got in trouble, and he had to apologize like mad later? You remember that? No. no. Oh, Shaq was what talking shit. Shaq, Shaq was like, "Yo, I'm <laughs> I'm coming for you," but then he did like the um the English dub limp sync isn't doesn't match up. He yeah, was yeah, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was going like, "I'll get you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he got yeah, the yeah. slips moving and shit. Oh yeah, damn, that shit was savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basketball was different back in the day. Yeah, it was. <laughs> basketball was very different. It definitely was. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. season starts Tuesday. Season starts Tuesday. We're gonna see all these fresh fits, guys. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot more to talk about this season uh, on Sup Podcast. On su- <laughs> this week, do 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 do. I know. Do we um, have any uh, closing final thoughts here? Uh, long live the revolution, dog. <laughs> long live. The views Asian and take opinions over, baby. expressed by Luke <laughs> do not reflect the views and opinions of the rest of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm Chris does guess. support him as his homie, though. Thanks, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just met this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, man? Any final thoughts? Uh, just thanks for having me, man. I've, of course, I've, uh, anytime. True pleasure. I, I've been trying to link up with you guys for a while, so this was uh, great. Really and you know, you yeah, always welcome back whenever you free, whenever you want. Just hit us up hit and us up. just come through. Yeah, we don't give you a guys got to come through. Uh, do mine. As, yeah, as yeah, absolutely. We'll talk about your podcast real quick before we get off. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have my own podcast. It's called The Podcast. T H A. Uh, Lil Wayne inspired. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I. I I cover a bunch of different things. Uh, it's not as organized as probably most professional podcasts, but that's okay. I'm doing my own thing. Uh, luckily, I don't need my own studio, I, or I do my own thing, so uh, so that works out. Uh, but yeah, I, I cover you know medical topics, um, sneaker topics, uh, Q and A's. Sometimes I do them live, and then um, if I have guests, uh, usually just comics, I'll talk. You know, mostly just uh, comedy stuff and just freelance conversation. So uh, if you guys come over, we could do that. But given yeah. you know the streetwear. You know, uh, uh, affection. You know, obviously, we can focus on that a little we'll bit more. We'll bring the uh, Scrubs V two <laughs> back in. We'll bring in. The, yeah, we'll bring. No, we'll bring the samples. Yeah. We'll bring. We'll the go samples. get them done. Let's do, man. Yeah, and yeah. I can show you my samples. Maybe we can yes. uh, put some things together. Collab. Yeah. There we go. But yeah. I, uh, outside of that, you know, I do a ton of like non podcast related uh, sneaker content, uh, medical content, Q and A stuff for uh, up and coming aspiring medical students um, or medical professionals, or even just regular people that want to learn about lactose intolerance. For example, mm-hmm. I did a whole topic on that. Uh, uh, what else? What else? Oh, I post every single comedy set I've ever done. So, uh, you know, based on the, uh, oh boy, the one you're going to you regret click, that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Based on the one you click, it may be super cringe or, uh, you may be slightly impressed, but, uh, I don't know. It's just kind of fun to like chronicle the progression because there's no, absolutely, oh, absolutely yeah. an evolution I'm seeing, uh, at least in myself, but, uh, I just got good enough to realize just how bad I am. So, uh, <laughs> there you ooh, go. that's a yeah. fun place to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. That's a very <laughs> fun place to be. <laughs> so we're working, man. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's me. So yeah, Dr. Souls 11, YouTube and, uh, and Instagram hit me up. Uh, very, uh, very reachable. So. Yep. Yeah. LZT325, mm-hmm. uh, Trevisus, mm-hmm. at Not That Cheney, at Sub Podcast NYC, uh, Sub Podcast NYC at Gmail. And also, guys, go on the Discord. That shit is getting popping. The Discord is popping, guys. Get mm. in there. I'm telling you right now. Lawrence goes in there organically sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. I don't have to text him to go in no, there. Sometimes yeah. he'll, he'll just show up. And he goes, What's up? What are we talking about? <laughs> I'd be like, Great, great pitches, everyone. Keep yep. doing your thing. <laughs> Keep I'm doing out. That's it. Um, That's trying to think. Anything else? Nah, I think we good, man. It's been a great episode. Yo, definitely coming back. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and by do. the way, if you if you guys ever need like studio space to f- record, that's uh, not as convenient as this. No, you're always welcome at my place too. Thank cool, you. Yeah, yeah, man, that's awesome. It. Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Sub podcast, guys. That's it. That's Woo. it. Peace. 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 Episode. Not a great episode. Yeah, thanks, guys. That was oh, dope. Yeah. We didn't miss anything really doing that. Nah, come on, bro. We we, t- we covered a lot. <laughs>